our last video, we covered how the deadline configurator influences the production deadline based on the priority of a manufacturing order in the queue. There's another element that's very important, uh, and it's called the real-time planner. It's a um, mechanism or feature built into Katana that allows available material or available components or ingredients to be booked to a manufacturing order based on its position in the manufacturing queue. And how this works is, if you're looking closely, you'll see that ingredients have a couple of different statuses on the line of the manufacturing order. For example, this manufacturing order SO2, which is a, take a closer look at what kind of product it is. It's a beige dining table for one unit has enough stock to manufacture it. But if you scroll down a bit, you'll see some that say ingredients are not available to manufacture it. You'll see others that say ingredients are expected. And going back to these uh, different um, statuses, the one that really pops out here is the expected quantities. So something that is expected means that it's incoming. So there's a relationship being built between your manufacturing orders and the available availability of your materials in stock. So what our system is doing is it's taking the manufacturing order that's highest in the queue and it's taking whatever ingredients it's committing and checking to see if they're in stock. So rule number one, it asks, is it in stock? And the answer is yes or no. If the answer is yes, it will say it's in stock. If the answer is no, it will say rule number two. Is it, is this, are any of these ingredients coming in either A, from a manufacturing order or B, from a purchase order? Purchase order for materials, manufacturing order for sub-assemblies. And if the answer is yes, then it will say, okay, it's expected. So it will identify when is the most recently receiving item, uh, actually the latest receiving item to complete this manufacturing order is coming in and it will book those ingredients to this manufacturing order on a manufacturing order level and say the specific date. If it is no for rule number two, it will say, okay, well, we don't have the ingredients even on order, so as far as we're concerned, they're not available. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that those ingredients aren't in stock when it says it's not available. In fact, they could actually be in stock, but the problem is, is that it could be that the manufacturing order where it says it's not available is deeper on the priority list and doesn't have those items or ingredients booked to it because it's not a top priority to book what's available to it because these ones up at the top are already taking them. So the real-time planner basically does this. It books the available ingredients to the highest rank manufacturing orders first. And if you change the rank, then the booking changes of what ingredients get booked to what manufacturing order. And there's a lot at, at play here, but, um, We'll go into the, a little bit more detail so I can actually demonstrate how it works with one of the examples that we have in front of us. And the example I want to use is currently at the top of the list. And it just shows how dynamic this actually works. The top item here is a beige dining table. And if you look at it, it is for one piece. And to make one piece, apparently I can actually start production because I have those ingredients in stock. Now, don't pay attention over here to the production status where it says it's already a work in progress. It's not relevant to this example at the moment, but if this was in a not started state like so, then I have answered myself the question, because the ingredients are in stock, I now have the ability to start the manufacturing process to a work in progress. So I'll turn these examples off for now. And if we scroll down the manufacturing order list, there's actually another 
specific order down here, which is another beige dining table for two pieces. It's the exact same product. It uses the exact same materials and it says its ingredients are not available. So what happens when I drag and drop from the bottom to the top? The priority of what is available changes. So let's look at number eight position, bring it to the number one position, and then you see something has happened. Okay, well, what actually has happened here? The status of ingredients has changed to expected, and then the one below it has switched to not available. Now, if you look at it from this perspective, when the other item was on the top, it showed that it was in stock. When this item was lower, it shows it's not available. Well, I clearly have enough ingredients to manufacture one beige dining table. But if I bring this up, then it tells me that, oh, I have, I have some ingredients that are expected to arrive in order to complete two dining room tables. So let's take a closer look inside of the manufacturing order to see what's really happening within the ranking. And this is when you're going to see the first time what a manufacturing order looks like inside of it. We won't go through all of the details here just yet. We'll use that in the next video. But what I want to show you in this case inside of the manufacturing order card is that this item is currently using two ingredients. One ingredient, which is the wood, is presently in stock. So this isn't a problem. But the second ingredient is currently listed as expected. So the thing that's maybe a little bit challenging to understand when looking at this manufacturing order is the manufacturing order level item, for example, the manufacturing order number five, on the manufacturing order level, it has an expected status for its ingredients. This one, SO2-1, which is also a beige table, has a not available status for its ingredients. So actually, the way that the ingredient status is brought up to the manufacturing order level, which you see on the make screen, which is the overview, is based on if any of the ingredients are either not available or expected. So for example, sales order number two, the, um, the wood is in stock, not a problem, but the beige paint isn't based on its position in the queue. So as far as the manufacturing order level is concerned, it adopts the uh, least common denominator status, which is the weakest link, AKA the beige paint. And so that's why you'll see that um, manufacturing order number five has an expected status because it needs to have a little bit more uh, paint in order to complete two pieces. And that's why the SO-2 slash one has a not available status because it needs more paint that it can't book from an incoming PO. So let's go to the first one once more and highlight and demonstrate like the real relationship that's happening here. So this manufacturing order is for the beige dining room table product. The beige dining room table product is committing ingredients to its production. And in order for it to commit these ingredients, um, it's pulling 30 meters here and eight liters here. Now, if I want to understand what is the problem with my uh, material availability, then I'm going to look at the one that's giving me an issue and that's the one that's in the expected status. And this is where the real-time planner becomes very obvious of how commitments are made through the ingredients availability booking. So if I choose this option here where it says view inventory info, this is the same inventory Intel component that we had seen earlier from the stock screen videos that we took um, in series uh, three. And now you can really see how the manufacturing queue is related to the committed material. So first off, what I wanna say is that we have three uh, we have 13.5 liters being committed to manufacturing for paint. And this is the beige paint. It's being committed by manufacturing order five, SO2, and MO2. 
and they're done in this exact order, MO5, SO2, MO2. And then if we go to the make page, MO5, SO2, MO2. One, two, three. Those are the single manufacturing orders that are committing the beige paint. And so you're getting real granular information about the availability of that specific ingredient. Now, I can show you as well how it looks as the booking takes place. And uh, there's a few bits of math going on here. Firstly, um, as we discussed in the, uh, in, the in the stock screen videos, um, up here at the top, you have all of the same formula calculations that you see on the stock screen. What is in stock plus what is expected? 4 plus 6 equals 10. What is committed? 13.5. 10 minus 13.5. Zero reorder point minus zero equals negative 3.5, which is, means that I have to buy three and a half liters of that specific paint to satisfy my entire production requirements. Because of all of my production orders, all three of the ones that are taking this beige paint, they're taking 13.5 liters to satisfy that need. Now, based on the ranking, what you see here is that I've currently got four liters in stock. That's why. Whenever sales order two for the beige dining room table was pushed to the top to make one ta uh, to make one table, it was in stock. So we'll take another quick look at how that appears here. So I'll take sales order number two. I'll put uh, MO5 below it, and we'll open up sales order two. And now that the ranking has changed, you see that now the beige paint is in stock. But I'm only requiring four liters of it. So when we open this up, SO2 is taking the four liters of all available inventory. Manufacturing order number five, which is making two tables, requires a total of eight liters. So it is taking the next available six liters that is coming in on the incoming purchase order with an expected arrival date of the 23rd of uh, December. And then I have two plus one and a half. So I need two additional liters to finish the second table of manufacturing order number five. And I need one and a half liters for manufacturing order number two for a beige coffee table, which states they're not available. What does this 1.5 plus two equal? It equals three and a half. Three and a half is how much is missing. So it's very easy to see how the relationship is taking place and how the uh, distribution of what's available gets allocated to the manufacturing orders based on their rank in the manufacturing order list. And so what does the value, what is the value in this? How does it help people make decisions about their business? Well, the most important thing is having a clear understanding of what it is that you can and cannot make uh, based on the availability of your materials is absolutely critical to, um, to number one, driving your purchasing decisions when it comes to your materials or even driving other manufacturing order decisions if you're building out sub-assemblies. So this is absolutely relevant uh, in terms of uh, making sure you have what you need. You never want to be in a position as a manufacturing company where you want to make something, but you think you have stock, but in reality, you actually don't. So this is telling you in real time, like, okay, do I need to change the way my manufacturing queue is? For example, I have to do a rush order for a certain type of product that is currently at the bottom of my, of my list, and I really don't know if I have the stock to make it, so I drag it all the way to the top to see if I can. And then Katana books the available ingredients to it, and it says in stock, nice and green. And the answer is yes, you can. Um, and if you can't, then at least you know, um, rather than trying to guess. And then, of course, based on that with the deadline configurator, you can combine the way that these things work. Whereas the whole goal of organizing manufacturing list is to get all of these different uh, dates to line up to both to all of them to be black and to get your ingredient availability status to be in stock for every manufacturing order that's at the top of the list. And that is the single biggest goal in terms of organizing your queue in real time. And so if you can do that, uh, which you can't do in Excel or other 
un or disconnected programs. If you can do it with Katana, then you can drive a tremendous amount of value, save yourself an enormous amount of error uh, that you can encounter in your business by using these tools and simple visual cues to modify and organize the way you produce stuff. So that's it for the real-time planner on the make screen. Um, I do and will go over the real-time planner on the cell screen as well when we get to um, videos related to the cell screen. But for the time being, this is how it works and it's the most basic way to approach it. And, um, and it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward. We do have quite a lot of useful um, tips related to it. Uh, so if you need additional information, then of course you can read uh, in the knowledge base how uh, it works when it relates to the availability statuses.